Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Today is the 10th Sunday, ordinary time, the Friday after. We continue with another story of Elijah the prophet. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, O Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. <laughs> you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we, who call on you in our need, May at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> See? A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him. Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and whipped and stood at the entrance to the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been the most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nishimi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Japhat of abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long, I long to, to see, see your, your face, face, O Lord. Lord. Hear, Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the law, wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord.
Alleluia, alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. <laughs> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go to Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Just a quick reflection on the first reading of the Book of Kings with our friendly prophet Elijah again. Some of you here uh, remember uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the, the musician and the singer. Some of you may not be old enough to remember Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> One of the very popular ballads or songs that Simon and Garfunkel sang is entitled The Sounds of Silence. It began with, hello darkness, my old friend, for I've come to talk to you again. And then it goes on. Now some people say this was written by Simon or Garfunkel to comfort a, a college friend who was uh, kind of in the depths of d despair and depression. So uh, the phrase darkness, hello darkness, my old friend, might refer to that. Some people said it was just a, a commentary by Simon and Gar Garfunkel on the inability of most people to communicate their emotions. And it was a kind of a song addressing our inability to express our emotions, emotional communication. Pretty good with uh, intellectual things, but not so good with feelings and emotions. So that's <clears throat> background to his phrase, in restless dreams I walked alone in narrow streets of cobblestone then this is the basis of people saying it was more about communication of emotions. People talking without speaking. People hearing without listening. People writing songs that voices never shared. And no one dared to disturb the sound of silence. Whatever the uh, intention of the authors and whatever experts say it was about, whether it's communication of feeling or whether it's about a friend who was in the depths of despair and darkness, it triggered a lot of uh, internal responses of a lot of people who listened to it. It uh, kind of clarified or addressed certain issues, whether they were dark or lonely or inability, friends, etc. <clears throat> so it had lots of levels of meaning. You can find it on the internet very quickly and you can print out the entire words. Uh, a lot of people have used it as a reflection, a meditation about darkness, about life, about friends, about communication, about listening, about hearing, etc. So that might be a good uh, project for the weekend to uh, see that because it does talk about and he bowed and prayed 
It's a, that's kind of the conclusion of it. I mention that as a way of understanding the first reading today about Elijah the prophet. Remember, he, he was running in despair. He was running for his life. He went down to Horeb, famous mountain, and he went into apparently what was like a cave in the mountain. And the message came, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord will be passing by. But remember, said a heavy wind came like Pentecost, but he didn't find God there. Uh, a strong wind crushing rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake, not in the earthquake, a traditional symbol of God's presence, the earthquake. Uh, fire, like the fire of Pentecost, but not there. But finally, uh, he heard a tiny whispering sound, and he went outside the cave, and then the Lord spoke to him, Elijah, why are you here? And there's that reference to being run out of town and state of despair and looking for the Lord. Now, historically, it was probably some incident in the life of Elijah where he fled, went to a mountain cave, and uh, probably prayed that the Lord would pass by, etc. <clears throat> but then all those traditional symbols, fire and wind and crushing rock and earthquake, all those came, but he still didn't hear. Then of all things, he heard a tiny whisper, the Lord is passing by. So that probably was a historical situation. But when it was written down, and when we read it today, uh, it causes lots of uh, reactions, identifies a lot of emotions, it identifies a lot of thoughts, and it's kind of a trigger story that triggers what's going on in your life, and you're kind of able to express it and identify it. Uh, said Elijah hid his face in the cloak, which would be uh, reminiscent of Moses when he talked to the Lord, he put the cloak over his face lest he die, see the face of God and die. So it's the same kind of dynamics that go on with this Elijah story. It's used a lot in spiritual direction and in counseling. Uh, kind of like the old Western, Western song, looking for uh, love in all the wrong places. Uh, it's kind of that theme. And Elijah was looking for the Lord in all the traditional ways, but not the right way for his situation. Then he was told to go back, etc., and to continue his life as a prophet. So a lot of people have found this as a, a great meditation. Am I looking for the Lord in the right places? Have I discerned the right signs or the sign of God's presence in my life? Or am I detracted by... Uh, well, surely the Lord would speak to me. Surely the Lord would do this. Surely the Lord would say, you say, well, God should do all these things, but you don't find the comfort in that. And so it's a great story about discerning how the Lord is present in your life. Not assuming that you know this is the way God speaks or this is the way God speaks to me. So uh, that might not be the way that God is speaking to you. So it's a marvelous story that triggers a lot of reflection. Simon and Garfunkel, one of their last signs is, the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls in tenement halls and whispered in the sounds of silence. Those of you who have lived in cities like New York City where there's a subway, it's probably the last thing you want to read to find any consolation. The scribblings on the subway walls. Uh, that's not exactly where you would look for God. But that was, and in tenement halls, if you had the uh, experience of living in a tenement housing, in their frustration, people write a lot of things on the wall. How do I get out of this dump, et cetera, those kind of statements. But that's really not where you traditionally look for God's presence or any revelation of God through those signs. 
So as I said before, it <clears throat> might be a good meditation for the weekend. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again uh, in restless dreams. 10,000 people, maybe more, talking without speaking, hearing without listening, writing songs that voices never shared. So it's kind of a reminder, uh, am I looking, as the old country, in, am I looking for love in the right place? Or have I been looking in all the wrong places for love? So with that reflection, let's stand and pray for some of the needs. Pray in a special way for all those who uh, do suffer from despair and depression, that they may find uh, light in their lives. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially Don O'Brien, Father Don O'Brien, whose funeral will be Monday in Prince of Peace in Kearney. So his family in this time of death, we pray to the Lord. For the family of Father jo Jerry Watovic, who was buried last week, especially his friends who are still uh, suffering are trying to deal with the death in their family and in their midst of, in their friends, we pray to the Lord. For the right kind of weather for a bountiful harvest, we pray to the Lord. For the safety of all those who work in the harvest machinery, etc., we pray to the Lord. For all those who have been victimized by storms in the past two or three evenings, that they find a way to restore their houses, to restore their cars, and to restore their trees, and to restore their corn crops, and all those things, we pray to the Lord. And for the intentions in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear these prayers, these intentions which we place before you in words, and also hear those in the silence of our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. See Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness to have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created mankind, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation, and may our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
as in humble praise we, we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other an expression of the peace of Christ. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray in thanksgiving. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do have a copy of the words of Sounds of Silence. Uh, kind of expensive, but there is financing available if you want to pick it up. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.